morning students today in this class we are going to see another example of the class hydrosova that is physalia physalia picture is given here and its common name is portuguese man of war because uh, this portion have some resemblance of a uh, warship oh, hence it got that name portuguese man of war um, regarding its habit it is a free floating free floating uh, is not seen attached to anything it's a free floating and it's also marine marine means it is um, found in um, sea um, and it's a pelagic pelagic means organism that seen in open uh, water surface not in bottom most uh, majorly in uh, the surface regions open sea that is pelagic pelagic means open sea uh that type habit also this physalia is showing and it is a colonial form the next one is pneumatophore pneumatophore yeah, is this structure yeah, it is an important characteristics of uh, physalia and uh, this um, pneumatophore is actually a modified medusa medusa actually we uh, learn in the last class um, polyp and medusa uh, to alternate form uh, that present in hydrosova uh, not only hydrosova um, as a whole in this phylum and uh, pneumatophore is a modified version of modified form of medusa Medusa its structure we know it's an umbrella uh, shape structure. X umbrella surface is there, sub umbrella surface is there. I'm just reminding you the topics that you learned in the last class. Um, manubrium is there, all those structure. So on hearing the name of Medusa, that structure should come in your mind. Okay. So pneumatophore is a modified Medusa. And it's a gas filled float. Float means uh, this structure actually helps that organism, that colony to float in the water, buoyancy. And it contains gas and that gas is produced by certain glands that are present inside this pneumatophore. And uh, the gases, common gases that is found inside the pneumatophore are nitrogen, oxygen and argon. Next, another point is core media. What is core media? Core media we can see here. They are bunches, certain bunches of what? Of suoids from the bottom of the pneumatophore. Um, from the bottom of this pneumatophore, groups of suoids are uh, seen here. Each group, each cluster, each bunch of that suoid is called core media. And in each bunch, three different types of suoids are present. How many uh, types? Three different types of suoids are present in each bunch, each cluster or in each core media. Uh, which are the three types? Uh, first one is gastrosuoid. Gastrosuoid, at the term itself, we can understand that uh, it is nutritive in function. Gastrosuoids. Um, what about its structure, gastrosuoids? It is tubular and at the end there is a mouth is there and that suoid lack tentacles. This is the peculiarity of gastrosuoids that see in the uh, cluster in that core media. Okay, the next type suoid is dactylosuoid. Dactylosuoid is uh, defensive. It's, it is various sizes, various sizes of dactylosuoids are present in this colony. Uh, this dactylous voids are uh, have a tubular body with a long tentacle. The tentacle's length is um, varying. It, um, it's, uh, it is so much um, elongated, elongated in the um, length. And most probably its length is 12 meter. 12 meter, you want to assume the size. 12 meter is there. And uh, that dactylous voids didn't have any mouth. Okay, next slide. Tentacles. Uh, what is the function of the tentacles of dactylosuoid? Function is to uh, prey capsule and defense. And after um, catching and uh, killing or paralyzing the prey, that prey is then transferred to gastrosoid for feeding it. Then the third soil that present in the core media is gonosoid. 
Gonosoids are actually uh, branching blastostyles. It's a blastostyle we have learned in Obelia. What is the function? Everything we know. Blastocell. Then they carry ma male and female gonophores. Gonads. And these gonosoids are also modified medusa. Next. Uh, so we finish the first class. Need areas first class hydrosova. Two examples we have learned. Uh, first one is obelia and second one is physalia. Next we are going to the next class skyphosova. In uh, skyphosova we are learning about jellyfishes. Um, some uh, students are familiar with this jellyfishes. And it's very beautiful to see as going is moving through that say surface uh, in surface water we can very easily notice this jellyfishes. Uh, well, well, we have a drive in boat or anything. Anyway, we are going to see, going to learn about this jellyfishes. This jellyfishes come come under the class Kyphosova. Silent features. What are its silent features? We can know. Uh, habitat. Habitat is marine. It's marine, of course. Then polymorphism also. Uh, regarding its polymorphism, polymorphism mainly the two forms that is present are uh, polyp and mediso. And in the case of jellyfishes, uh, all its adult forms are in medusa. And the polypod form, we can see it is very insignificant in its life cycle. And uh, it's, it is shown that polypod form is shown uh, only in certain developmental stage of this jellyfishes. Only in its, uh, some stage of development that polypoid phase, polypod stage is visible. And also true velum is absent in the case of jellyfish. True velum in the case of Obelia, uh, we uh, studied that true velum is present. Velum, uh, anybody remember what is velum? Velum uh, is um, uh, a uh, 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 ring-like expansion that is present on the sub-umbrella surface. Okay, and uh, it engages. It is a. Uh, it engages a shelf. It's a shelf-like. Also, anyway, that's a true villain, and that villain uh, tentacles are eminently in the case of Obelia. Anybody is not remembering, need to go back and see after the class. Okay, uh, then mesoglia. What about mesoglia? Mesoglia is also, also familiar term now. Mesoglia is in the case of jellyfish, it is non cellular, but it is very thick. Non cellular means it is not composed of any type of cellular inclusions, but it is a thick. Uh, in a thick um, uh, um, uh, what it means its consistency its consistency is very thick next uh, about cylindron cylindron also we know what is uh, cylindron is a gastrovascular cavity ah, cylindron um, it, it, it includes about its stomach uh, um, everything all the digestive tract in the case of jellyfish also it has a central stomach for gastric pouches are there radial canal and circular canal radial canal and circular canal is familiar with uh, while you learn about medusa in the case of obelia and this gastric pouches pouches central stomach everything we will learn today's section itself so now uh, just hear that the cylindron is consists of central mouth for gastric pouches and radial canal and circular canal is there. Then tentaclosis. Tentaclosis means they are the sense organ. Uh, and this sense organ is accommodated in eight notches in the margin of the umbrella. In that the umbrella's outer margin, eight notches. Notches means small depressions. Eight notches are there. Inside that notches, this sense organ called tentaculosis is located. So, how many points we learn? It's a habitat uh, regarding the polymorphism, uh, then mesoglia, cylindron, and tentaculosis. Next, uh, um, it's medusa. Medusa means adults are uh, in uh, exist in medusoid form, and it's medusa. That means it's adult. It's gonochoric. That term you need to familiarize. Gonochoric means that it is the condition in which male and female seen as separate individual. 
that are gone occurring. So many verse, uh, so, so many um, situations, so many places that term is coming. Uh, so uh, you need to understand from that from um, that term itself. Gonochoric means sexes are separate. And it's gonads are endodermal. Endodermal means it is originated from the endoderm. So that's why gonads are endodermal in origin. Approximately 200 species of Skyphosovans are identified uh, so far. And uh, examples are Aurelia. Aurelia species is given here. Rhizostoma and Cassiopeia. These are the examples. And in this class, uh, the example that we are going to study is about Aurelia. So, Aurelia. What are its features? It's adult. Adult is represented by medusoid stage. Medusa like structure. And a cone, uh, concave side and convex side, uh, X umbrella side and sub umbrella side is present. And uh, so many tentacles are uh, present from the margin of the umbrella. Uh, then eight notches. I have uh, told you about this notches just before in the previous slide. Uh, eight notches are present in outer margin. And uh, we need to understand about the location. Four notches are per radial and four are in the radial. I am going to show you what is its arrangement. This is the notches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight notches. Uh, four are radial means in the radius itself. In that radius is one, two, three, four in the radius. And 4 and in the radial means between that radius. 1, 2, 3, 4. That is 4 are radial and 4 are in the radial. And inside that notches what is located the tentaculosis sense organ. Okay. Um, then velum. Velum in the case of Aurelia or uh, the Skyphosova it is not true velum. Um, instead, it has a valerian. In the case of Aurelia, uh, we are not uh, calling it by a velum. Instead, we are uh, um, calling by another name, valerian, and it contains an endodermal cavity. Inside that valerian, an endodermal cavity is present. And uh, regarding its mouth, mouth is present at the end of this manubrium. In the center, like uh, the handle of an umbrella, uh, this organism also has an extended portion called manubrium. And at the tip present that mouth, this four corner means that mouth has four corners. We will show you. Yeah, uh, it is a, um, um, it's a up, uh, what, front view. Front view of this uh, Aurelia. Um, so, in that way, we can see is the organism in such a pattern. And here, at the end of that elongated manubrium, we can see that mouth. It is four cornered. One, two, three, four. Four cornered mouth. Okay. Hmm. Four cornered mouth is present, and from each corner, oral lamps are extending. Oral from each corner, oral lamps is extending. Okay. Uh, next slide. And this oral lamps for from the four corners, oral lamps are emanating, and that lamps contains so many. Nematocyst for stinging to catch the prey. Okay, next subgenital pit. What is subgenital pit that I will show you? They are also four in number. They are in the radi in, in the interradial planes of the body. Ah, these are sub um, subgenital pit. Okay, one small hall like a pit uh, that itself one two three four a small pit is present in between this oral 
that is interradial but is it is interradial also that uh, if we see its location location wise also its um, location is not in radial position but is interradial that small pits are called subgenital pit and above this pit actually located its gonads then we are going to see about the cylindron that is gastrovascular cavity gastro vascular cavity means uh, mouth is there where is that mouth is present mouth i will show you uh, uh, mouth is there in that mouth open to a space the space where that four cornered mouth opens towards inside that manubrium that space is called um, stomach stomach then that stomach leads to four interradial gastric pouches that also we can see interradial gastric pouches one pouch two pouch three pouch four pouch they are also um, position interradial not in radial position interradial this is an expanded view of one gastric pouch gastric pouch uh, this one in the inside that gastric pouch a horseshoe shaped gonad is located so four gonads will be there uh, one each in one gastric pouch and some uh, gastric filaments are present here and uh, what is the purpose of this filaments filaments are uh, also contain numerous nematocysts if any prey uh, reach here eli using this filament it can kill that prey that's the purpose of these filaments and uh, that's about the gastric pouch uh, this space is the stomach it's the mating point manubrium opens from here and uh, that stomach and uh, from this stomach towards the four direction in the radially present this gastric pouch any doubt you can see here uh, mouth open and to that uh, sp uh, central space from that central space uh, four in four direction in the radially four gastric pouches are there okay next uh, uh, so mouth we understand stomach uh, where we understand for interradial gastric pouches also we have learned the gastric filament also I already tell you that is with nematocysts for killing prey that enter live into that stomach and 16 radial canals also present 16 radial canals from that from emanating from the gastric pouches how many radial canals 16 radial canals are there uh, these are these are the gastric pouch one two three four uh, from this emnit 16 radial radial means pass to us radial radius uh, radial canal mm, and uh, four are uh, per radial per radial i will show you this one this blue color are per radial means it, it is in the same position of radius per uh, correct with that radius location so that's why it's called per radial per radial canal one two three four and um, four are in the radial between these two radial one can place uh, in similar way four can be uh, located one two three four four in the radial canals and Eight adradial. Adradial means what? Uh, from uh, in bit from uh, here between one interradial and another. Uh, so sorry, between one radial and interradial. Uh, again, possibility for one more radial. That radial canal is called adradial. That how many? From here we can count one, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And total, how many are there? 16 radial canals. All these 16 radial canals open to where? 
a central canal in that way whatever thing that organism take to its body as food will reach the entire uh, organism's body in that way the body fully can be nourished so this radial canal opens to circular canal the reproductive aspects uh, medusa is unisexual unisexual that um, we already understand uh, by the term it's gonochoric means males and females are separate we are also our gonochoric because our male and females are separate uh, like this medusa also unisexual and um, four gonads are present it is horseshoe shaped it is located in the gastric pouch as everything we have already seen then another um, point we are going to see the tentaculosis or ropalia um, this ropalia or tentaculosis tentaculosis otherwise called ropalia the sense organ uh, it can be asked for one more question also okay it is a sense organ it is eight number why it is eight in number because eight notches it is located in the notch eight notches so its number is eight and um, um a, a modified tentacle it is a modified tentacle that tentaculosis is a modified tentacle and it is hidden by marginal lappet lappet means a fleshy outgrowth uh, it is hidden by a uh, fleshy outgrowth that outgrowth is called marginal lappets and also with a hood like outer process and a hood hood like a hood means uh, some of our clothes have a hood uh, like we say uh, hood like covering also there for hiding this tentaculosis and inside all these things inside the lappets and hood like nothing in that depression this tentaculosis are located then regarding its structure say hollow club shaped structure i will show you ah this is the uh, tentaculosis and uh, this is that single club shaped structure okay and uh, this is the hood uh, uh, hood mm, and this is the uh, that club shaped tentaculosis or ropalia <laughs> okay uh, then distal part its distal part contains some calcareous particles called statolith its distal part contains some uh, calcareous particles called statolith um, to ocelle ocelle means i like structure um, where let me to go back uh, uh, two ocelle are present one ocelle and the next one two ocelle are also Uh, present and then two cavities present two olfactory pits are present olfaction means for uh, to perceive the smell uh, one pit is present in exambrella means upper side and one is present in subambrella side one pit is there on exambrella side and another is called uh, present in the subambrella uh, two pits are present that about the structure so it is uh, hidden by marginal lappets one is hood and fleshy um what um, um, fleshy um, uh, marginal lappets it is called marginal lappets inside these two structures it is hidden and its uh, distal end contains so many calca um, calcareous um, structures are there is called the statolith uh, statolith no not it's so called ah, okay statolith itself then what is um, it uh, one two pits are present that pits are olfactory in function one pit is ex in exambrella side and the other pit is in subambrella side this is about its structure of that propalia next uh, we are going to see the life cycle of orelia orelia exists they are gonochoric means male and females are separate okay so male produce sperm from the body of the um, male medusa male medusa means actually that sperm is from where it is producing uh, from the gonad that is located in the gastric pouch of that male medusa uh, that uh, sex cell that means sperm is produced and it comes out 
through manubrium at the end of the manubrium mouth is present through the mouth it comes out comes out to water because that medusa are, are floating in water and uh, from the water it uh, find its female counterpart and uh, it enters through its female mouth manubrium and finally reach the stomach and uh, then reach the its gastric pouch in the gastric pouch uh, it, its gonad is present its gonad what will be present egg is present ovum is present and that sperm fertilize that ovum fertilization is so internal and as a result of that fertilization uh, zygote is formed then that zygote is in the similar way it is passed out to the mouth to the water and that zygote later formed into a saucer shaped planula larvae that larvae we need to uh, keep in mind by hurting the our mind is named planula larvae it is free leaf free living uh, free living in the water uh, okay then after some um, period of free life it settle in some solid substrate and gain this form this form is some it is the polypoid form Ah, okay, the, this is that form is called hydra tuba. In this hydra tuba form, the planula uh, larva settle down in some substratum in the sea bottom, and uh, it uh, it loses its cilia and develops some uh, cilia and uh, uh, it develops a mouth at its free end. Such a structure is called hydra tubia. Hydra tuba. It becomes settled, attached with the substratum, loss of small cilia, uh, develops say, a mouth at its free end, and become this hydra tuba stage. It is the sedentary, sedentary, not movable, with a definite mouth, and that mouth also becomes square shaped and uh, uh, its margins then become raised to form a manubrium manubrium like structure manubrium later form from that mouth and uh, okay the aboral side this side then narrowed to form a pedangle pedangle like structure and uh, around that mouth central mouth small tender Tentacles are developed. What is developing here? Uh, small tentacles are developing surrounding the central mouth. Then the hydra tuba feeds and grows in size and produces some lateral buds. Uh, that buds then separate from the parent and each can develop into a fresh hydra tuba. That is one chance. Okay. Then normally what is going on in one chance from this hydra tuba itself. But can develop and form other hydra tuba. Anyway, that hydra tuba then um, change move to next stage. What is the next stage? We are going to see. Skyphy stoma. In this form. Skyphy stoma was a peculiarity. The hydra tuba develops so many transverse furrows. These transverse constrictions get deepened. As a result, the body appears like a horizontally segmented. This phenomena is called strobilation. Strobilation. Spelling is T R O B I L A T A O N. Strobilation. Uh, this segmented hydrotuba now is called the uh, skyphy stoma. And uh, the immature skyphy stoma resembles a pile of minute saucers. Mean, uh, that means it uh, resembles some saucers arranged one above the other. Okay. And the saucer shaped uh, segment. 
segments this saucer shaped segments then detach from the body of the scyphe stoma and then develop into small free swimming larvae called uh, ephyra next form it is later form into a ephyra this is the ephyra is that segment detached from scyphe stoma uh, this is called ephyra each ephyra is characterized by possession of eight long bifid arm ephyra structure i will show you a picture also there ephyra this is the detailed structure of ephyra it has eight bifid arms are there and in between that it's a notch present tentaculocystor ropalium 18 number and from the center the manubrium is present and manubrium's end contain that mouth from that four corner of the mouth oral ants are present and then after few uh, period after, after some period it then developed into a fully grown Aurelia medusa this is it life cycle so i think life cycle is very clear to you um male, male and female medusa sperm egg ovum fused cycle forming from the cycle planular larva settle down to form hydrotuba from hydrotuba scyphe stoma is forming from scyphe stoma ephyra is developing ephyra then uh, become an aurelia larvae Exceptional situations are the hydrotuba itself can produce lateral buds to give rise to uh, another hydrotuba. Uh, this is the life cycle. <laughs> then and, um, we need to um, understand about the metagenesis in Aurelia also. Metagenesis we know is alternation of generation. Alternation of generation in uh, itself, what is that? Uh, sexual and asexual phase uh, alternates in the life cycle. It is not well marked in the case of Aurelia because uh, that sexual phase is represented by always Medusa. Medusa phase is, Medusa phase is prominent in Aurelia. So that metagenesis is not that much well marked in uh, Aurelia uh, because of the predominance of uh, Medusoid form. That polypoid form is only represented by uh, that Skyphysoma and Hydrotuba generation.